How are you doing today? I'm wonderful, thank you. How are you? Really, really good. Hard one right off the bat. Favourite war movie of all time, and you can't obviously say 1970. Oh, well, obviously, that would be very narcissistic. <laughs> uh, Favourite war movie of all time, I actually saved in Private Ryan. I saw it when I was really young. I remember it just stuck with me, absolutely obsessed with it. I mean, I could go into great detail. I've seen all the war movies. Sure. <laughs> we, could, we could get real deep here, but I guess we're limited on time. <laughs> well, that's a great pick. So. Yes, thank you. Am I wrong in thinking that you are the first female writer of, or co-writer, of a uh, major war movie? I don't know. I didn't check with the other women. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't check. No, nope, maybe. I, I looked hope into so. it. Oh, I hope not, actually. I, I, I couldn't loads. find another one. Yeah. Like, there doesn't seem to be... Like, obviously, Catherine Bigelow directed. Of course. Her, but okay. she didn't write it. No. Um, um, so, it's strange that... I mean, I guess, yeah, I, I suppose war movies are traditionally seen as the bastion of male writers. Yeah, so... Here I, I am. <laughs> uh, you are. Uh, as, as potentially the first female writer of a big war movie, was there something that you felt was missing from the genre and that you, you think you brought into it? No, I felt I felt in World War One movies, I didn't feel like there had ever been a film that really accurately portrayed from a, from a single soldier's point of view what that carnage was. And so when Sam spoke about this, I realised that was kind of the film I'd always wanted to see. I, I love war movies, like grew up on them documentaries, everything like that, and I think to have a really immersive war movie is something special. I mean, that's that's why I love Saving Private Ryan, the opening. Oh, yeah. Minutes yeah. of that, or, or you feel like you're on that beach, you're moving around when you're watching it, and that's what I wanted to do with 1917, and so, yeah, this, that, that was what was missing. And um, when, I guess, you first came involved in the project, like, yes. I, I don't fully know, and hopefully you can answer it for me. <laughs> um, like, did you come on board knowing it was going to be the yeah, kind of absolutely. one take? Or? So Sam phoned me up. I was in my pyjamas typing away, as I do as a writer. You might know <laughs> <Absolutely>, that. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. You feel me. <laughs> um, and, so, like, Sam Mendes' name scrolls across your screen. You're like, hello. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> one ring. Um, and he told me, he was like, I have this idea. I want to co-write it. I was very excited by that. I love to collaborate. Um, he was basically like, uh, it's a mist you're going through no man's land. Um, well, World War One. I. I was like, okay, great. Real time. I was like, oh, wow, okay, okay. And he's like, okay, come by my house Tuesday. We'll talk about it. I was like, great. And then he was like, oh, by the way, it's all going to be one shot. Okay, bye. I was like, what a way to end that conversation. Yeah, what a way. He, he, he's theatrical. He knows a good ending. He knows he an out point. That's a cliffhanger right there. He's got there. a good entrance and a good exit. Um, very much so. So yes. Yeah, so that, so right off the bat, it was always going to be one shot. Another fantastic female writer, uh, Phoebe Waterbridge said something lovely about one of my fellow Irishmen. She said, Andrew Scott, she thinks, is the greatest actor of our generation. Did you have much I interaction absolutely, with him? Absolutely. Agree. Well, I was on set every day. And actually, um, I know we don't have favourites, but when I was writing we're not supposed scene, to. we're not supposed to have yeah. favourites, but when I was writing that scene, I think Sam always had in mind that he was going to cast Andrew Scott oh, as really? Lieutenant Leslie. And, it, and as soon as I knew that, when I was sitting down writing it, I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay, gloves are off. I am... Um, one of my, it was one of my favourite scenes to write and to see it performed he was unbelievable it was it was one of my favourite scenes it was right after it was right after like the hot we shot it a few days after the hot priest thing had aired as well oh so really? we were, everyone on set was like <laughs> he, he is, is that's he him is, he's very good at everything it's, it's <laughs> infuriating um, and just to look forward a little bit I am so excited for One Night in Soho yes it last night in last Soho night, so I sorry I know, I know it's a long um, title I, I, I've been privy to like a little bit of information about yes. it and I'm so excited well, can you reveal anything or is there is no. something about it that you are excited about uh, you know what i'm really excited about um edgar's a genius i've seen the rough cut of it because i was on set when we were shooting that as well i've seen the i've seen like a rough cut of some of it and it is everything you want from an edgar Wright movie but it is just like next level i'm so happy with it i couldn't <laughs> be more excited <laughs> and one final question yes uh one thing i've been telling everyone about 1917 mm -hmm. is i think you have to go see it on the biggest yes loudest yes. screen you can find yes. because it's such it's so cinematic uh what for you is the ultimate film to watch in the cinema something you love oh, watching on the big screen oh that's such a tough one this this movie <laughs> i've Are seen you it cheating nine on this times one? <laughs> i'm gonna cheat on this one i've seen it nine times nine. i've seen it i've seen it because well i you know i had to see it for work sure, yeah. <laughs> it was my job to watch rough cuts of it like i couldn't just you know i haven't just saw it nine times in the last week although i would have um and i've seen it in everything from my laptop and my phone to the imax and let me tell you in the imax i was i I wrote it and I knew everything that happened and I was still like, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh, is he going to make it? Um, so do the IMAX, please. That's, that's, a, that's a good sell. Yeah. Well, well done. Well, that's, that's a good cliffhanger for this one too. So fantastic. Really? Thanks Thank for you so a much. Good day. Thanks very much. You have a brother in the 2nd Battalion. Yes, sir. They're walking into a trap. Your orders are to deliver a message calling off tomorrow morning's attack. If you don't, it will be a massacre. There's only one way this 
accent. Last man standing. 1917.